Trevor J. James. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I think we're going to do the, I can only imagine. Thank <laughs> you. 
Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I, my name is Father Loyola Amalraj. I work as shared pastor both here and in St. Teresa and Eagle. I sadly welcome all of you this morning for the funeral liturgy of Marge Lomas. And I would like to offer my deep sympathies to children, son Tom, daughters Patty, Monica, Joan, and Mary, 13 grandchildren and 24 great-grandchildren. What a blessing. And we are here not only to mourn the loss of uh, Marge, but also to celebrate the love that she had for Luke, her husband, living so many years of married life and so devoted to God. And what a time to celebrate not only her death but also victory in heaven with Jesus at this time of Easter. So we begin with the sense of great faith that both Marge and Luke had. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. In the waters of baptism, Marge died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. Now let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord, as our faith in your Son raised from the dead is deepened. May our hope of resurrection for your departed servant, Marge, also find new strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated. Go ahead, Colleen. Reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw a holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain, for the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give a gift from the spirit of life-giving water. The victor will inherit these gifts, and I shall be his God, and he will be my son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Are you unaware that we who were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in the newness of life. If, then, we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. When the soldiers came to the place called the skull, they crucified Jesus and the criminals there, one on, on his right and the other on his left. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subjected to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly. For the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes, but this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Usually, when I work on the funeral liturgy, I take down the names of the deceased and the loved ones and put in a small sticker and put it inside my book. So this morning, when I was going to put it inside, I forgot to remove the previous one. Guess what name it had? Yeah, two weeks before Christmas. 
And this is the first one in this parish, although I had another funeral there with a different book. Uh, there are a lot of um, wonderful coincidences. This is one of them. I was kind of surprised to see how they were so bombarded in, in life here on earth. And uh, there is some coincident experience for me. We started having funerals since the middle of May until two weeks before Christmas, almost one or two funerals a week. And then everything stopped. And we started opening here. It ended with Luke Loomis and then we are beginning with Marge Loomis, what a coincidence. I want to thank the family for uh, inviting me to celebrate the funeral liturgy. Working with you, I got to know more about your parents' extraordinary faith. And the readings you were so fully focused on selecting showed me the depth of your own faith as children. I met with all the daughters and you picked up a beautiful reading that means so much at this time. The first reading, John's book of Revelation was written at a time when people were experiencing persecution and death. It's like the torture people experienced seemed unstoppable and God didn't seem to intervene. So instead of that, God's revelation came to John in this way. He began to say, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and former earth had passed away. In other words, death and destruction that we see as if taking away our joy and uh, the, the beautiful relationship we have, we have with our loved ones seem to be passing away. But everything is going to be remade. That's what was symbolically expressed here. The Jerusalem was being destroyed. People went through persecution. But God is going to make another Jerusalem that is going to come down from heaven. Isn't that beautiful? Even when we lose our loved ones, like the beautiful people Luke and Marge, we are being told that you will have a reunion with them. You will be living in a land that will be endless. And uh, God will be the dwelling place and we will be living forever because God is very capable. He is the Alpha and the Omega, meaning the beginning and the end, which means God, is, had, God has no beginning, no end. So it is wonderful to recall those words, particularly when we celebrate the Easter time. Just we had the Easter celebration and that's what Easter tells us. Life is endless. What we see here is going to pass away, but what we are going to experience is endless. And the same thought is also expressed by Paul too. You know, when we are baptized, we actually are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, which means we will be rising again. Like Jesus rose, we will be rising to another glorious life. And that's what Paul began to talk to his believers. Christ died, but he came back alive, so therefore we will also participate in his glory. And also the, the gospel you picked up from the gospel of Luke, beautifully tells how Jesus, when he was going through his own persecution by human beings about to die on the cross, he looked at the one who simply believed in him. He was a thief and robber, condemned by people. And he believed that this man is taking so much upon himself and he's so innocent. So he's not a human being. So he sees us. Uh, that moment to express his deep trust in Jesus. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And what did Jesus say? When you die today, you will be with me in heaven. And so all the sufferings we go through in life will simply disappear because there will be a time when we will be united with our loved ones and with God we will all live forever. What a beautiful, faithful uh, reflection we have this morning as we mourn the loss of Marge. So with those few words, I would like to share with you some of uh, what the family told me, although I don't like to steal the thunder Mary and others will have, so I'll just reflect what relates to the gospel. I understand Mary Marge was a sweet person. I hear some nodding going on, very sweet. You have to be very kind and compassionate to be sweet, unconditionally loving, right? Those are some beautiful qualities. When you go into that person's Presence, you know that you're being accepted, welcomed, 
whatever you are, whoever you are. So radiating that presence of welcome. Marge was also a faithful person. I could see their lives so centered on faith, simple commitment to the church and faith, and it's amazing. But Marge's faith also boiled down to simple ways of, um, you know, saying the rosary. I understand that you would say the rosary in the car, praying it all the time. So our worship doesn't stop here on Sunday, just one walk in and walk out. We have to take it home. And whenever we find leisure time, we have to communicate with God because human love is going to be insufficient. And if you don't turn to God, then you will expect the other person to be like God, which is not going to be happening. The part of our love for each other will be having that gap, missing peace. That peace is for God. So when you turn to God, then God fills in. Then your relationship with your spouse will be extended, supported, and strengthened. So she found that place. Lots of prayer before the meals, right? A very devoted person, you know, saying spontaneous prayers and so on. And the sense she was also a hard worker, work, have, had to work hard to raise the family, to work in the mink ranch farm, all of that. Very giving. Obviously, you are sweet and compassionate. You are being selfless. Very practical. In other words, don't get things all worked out in your head. Be practical, you know. Find out what works for you and keep doing that. Fun loving and loved to dance. Wow. Very motherly. Obviously, those qualities all go together when you say somebody is sweet. Excellent cook. Loved her sweet cookies and peas and always gave leftovers and loved to give away veggies, particularly tomatoes. So generous. Take it and enjoy she loved the church festival and volunteered, so we are uh, losing one of our great volunteers. You know, people like Marge are the ones that are heartbeats of our parish community. They contribute, they make things happen, and they were here even this church was uh, built, right? They moved, and then children moved into the school and all of that. I remember vaguely the situations uh, that developed around. So right from early days onwards, she was so committed along with Luke, so it's an extraordinary thing. She also enjoyed being a Eucharistic minister, loved to distribute communion, so she had that special devotion for Jesus. Her mother went to daily Mass. Obviously, you know, these things are really passed on. Most of who we are, we inherit from our moms and dads, so I think the children got from mom what she got from her mom. I hope whatever you children got from your mom, Marge, you have passed it on to your grandchildren, and the grandchildren absorb and they pass it on to others. So it takes a whole family to live a life of faith. It's not just a single event that uh, somebody gets excited about it. And a few other things I read from the obituary, they had, both Luke and March, had celebrated the amazing milestone of 70 years of marriage last September. Well, they were married before I was even born. What a history. What a history. What a blessing. I think the foundation for that is to be committed to God. Without the deep faith and simple faith of being devoted to God, devoted to the church, fills in for all the gaps. It helps when couples go through uh, struggles of life. And a few other things, they settled near McQuanago on a mink ranch where they lived for 60 years and raised their family of five children. Beautiful commitment. And I also understand Marge worked for Citizens Bank in McQuanago for 25 years and she was a very positive presence at the bank throughout the community. Same sweetness that you children and grandchildren, great grandchildren enjoyed, that was the epitome. She was the embodiment of all of that and therefore the community experienced that. You know, who you are at home with your loved ones are the ones you are going to be for the community as well. So she extended goodness to the community. And those are the few things that I 
read from the obituary, and I will let Mary reflect more on Marge. And I thank you again for the faith that is being demonstrated in your lives, even as you grieve the loss. It is kind of a bittersweet thing because you, you regret, you grieve, you mourn, but at the same time, you're also, in a way, relieved that they are both together in heaven. For such faithful couple, there is place in heaven, so you can truly thank God for the gifts that they had and for taking them to heaven. God bless you. Please rise. Let us offer our prayers and petitions to God. First of all, thanking God for the tremendous gift that Marge and uh, Luke were to you and to the community, and for the grace to live like them, and to also keep faith as a center of our uh, Lives. So with this in mind, let us offer to God our prayers and petitions. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For Marge, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Marge, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that she may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends and for all those who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of Marge, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And those prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. Loving God, we bless you for the longevity of life that you had blessed with for Luke and Marge to be able to be married for 70 years and to have this simple faith in you and to be committed to you. And that gave them the missing piece of love and that demonstrated itself in being so compassionate, so welcoming, so giving, and so caring. Pour your blessings upon the family so that they may realize that the strong commitment to you in faith actually can change our lives and give us the missing piece of our love that we seek with each other or one another and that know that you are the one who will complete our desire for love and with that completion of love, we will radiate your presence by living a very compassionate and loving and caring life. So help us all to be rooted in faith as this couple was. And we pray this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you. 
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, to the Almighty Father. And the Lord, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands the for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Almighty and merciful God, by means of these sacrificial offerings, wash away, we pray, in the blood of Christ to the, the sins of, our, of your departed servant, Marge, for you purify unceasingly by your merciful forgiveness those you once cleansed in the waters of baptism through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful, Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as we, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Study of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and the resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spirit throughout the world, and to bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jerome, our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember your servant Marge, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and to all the saints, especially St. James and St. Teresa, our patrons, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glory for you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. us to realize that this love is only a sample of what is yet to come, and that what is yet to come is everlasting, and God calls us to have that hope and faith in him as we live our lives. Otherwise, if we live for, our, for this life alone without the faith and commitment to God, we will find ourselves disillusioned at the end of our lives. So for us to have this strong faith and live in that faith every day, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Especially forgive us for the times when we didn't turn to you, when our human love was insufficient and incomplete and still made us feel lonely and abandoned, even when we remained in relationships, failing to realize that that space was meant for you. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ for the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said it to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and to graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace to you. Peace to you.
there will be only one communion minister standing in the middle, so if you can alternate your pews, one pew coming this way and going back to place, the other one comes up, it'll help us maintain the social distancing, okay? Thank you. This is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who himself was put to the test by being condemned unjustly as a criminal, even though Jesus had the power to retaliate, he withheld everything and absorbed them all with the hope that as he was being condemned, he would mysteriously experience his father's love that could not in any way be experienced. And how blessed are we to have Jesus as a role model to open our hearts to experience God's love mysteriously. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let's be seated and pray. Having received the sacrament of your only begotten Son, who was sacrificed for us and rose in glory, we humbly implore you, O Lord, for your departed servant Marge, that cleansed by the Paschal mysteries, she may glory in the gift of the resurrection to come through Christ our Lord. At this time, on behalf of the family, I invite Mary and Monica to come forward to offer us a short eulogy. Mary and Monica. Good morning. Thank you for gathering with us here today at St. James Church, and welcome to those of you watching virtually. We are here to celebrate the life of our wonderful mother. I am Monica, one of Marge's daughters, along with my sister Mary, and we're joined here by our brother Tom and sisters Patty and Joan, as well as other family members. Our mom, Marge Loomis, was quite an amazing person. She was compassionate, generous, selfless, thoughtful, and caring. She played a big role in our lives, her grandchildren and her great-grands as well. Growing up on the Mink Ranch and the farm where they lived for 60 years was a great childhood for all of us. We learned to have fun playing outdoors, shooting hoops in the barn, and taking walks to the back field to watch the beautiful sunsets. We also learned hard work by watering the mink, weeding the garden, and picking beans, raspberries, and corn, and then freezing them for later meals. Mom had a very kind heart and spread joy everywhere she went. She had a smile and giggle that lit up every room she entered. She enjoyed being with people and especially seeing all the customers every day at her job at Citizens Bank in McQuanago. And she would often stop to visit other friends and neighbors, never calling them in advance, just stopping by to say hi or to drop off a tasty treat or some vegetables or flowers from her gardens. The one thing that made mom happiest was time with her grandkids and great-grandkids, watching them play outside at the farm or participating in sports, where mom and dad would always cheer from the top row of the bleachers. And she also enjoyed cooking meals for her grandkids, who really enjoyed the butter and sugar sandwiches. Mom's favorite part of any meal was dessert, as she always had a serious love of all things sweet. Even several grandkids have this addiction and attribute it to her. No meal was complete without dessert. Her specialties were fruit pies, cookies, jello, and of course the four-layer dessert, which she is famous for. One of the first lessons in life was to clean your plate so you could have dessert. The quality most people will remember about her mom is her strong and unwavering Catholic faith. She would go to daily mass before she went to her secretarial job in downtown Milwaukee, and this habit continued throughout her life. She would pray the rosary daily, along with a litany of other prayers. She would say the grace before meals and extend it with a long list of other meaningful prayers, confusing any first-time guests, and especially mm. the son-in-laws. She is a very good example of how her, to her family of how to live a blessed life. Her final years were blessed with a happy, joyful, and peaceful spirit. Mom and Dad had a beautiful love story that started when they were 17 years old in high school, where they were voted the most likely couple to get married. They did get married when they were 23, after working and saving their money to buy a property. Mom was always known as the banker from the start, while Dad relished his time outdoors with the animals and hunting with his kids and grandkids, too. They were blessed 
to celebrate 70 years of marriage last September 2nd, surrounded by their immediate family. Mom and Dad lived a humble, happy, and holy life together. It was nice Mom could join the love of her life so soon after Dad's passing, only three months ago. I guess Mom just couldn't live without him. I guess mom just couldn't live without him or dad couldn't or dad couldn't last without her helping him make important decisions like should I have ice cream on that pie or should I just have it plain tonight so about eight years ago today we all helped to create a special book of memories for mom and dad I had shared some with dad's eulogy as well and I will share a few more right now I cherish the times Grandma walked me to work over the phone in Chicago and then later in New York City. Holding Grandma's soft, wrinkled, small hands in the back of the old red Buick, sitting close together, feeling her warmth, she held my hand the entire ride. Hearing her tell me that I did a good job in lacrosse and feeling, really knowing she loves me and I and is proud of me. Talking to Grandma on the phone was always nice, or when she left a message. She always had her method to follow. Hello, this is Grandma Luma's calling. Give me a call back if you have time. And she always ended the, with the adorable, we'll be talking to you then. I loved how excited she gets when she has something of hers to give to us. Calling her Granny Bird taking a little lamb for show and tell. That was so special. A couple of grandma's prayers that she liked to say often. May the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace. Amen. Mary conceived without sin. Pray for us who have recourse to thee. Jesus, mercy, Mary, help. She loved reciting the memorari. And every time we would get in the car, she would say, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, accompany us on our journey. St. Christopher, pray for us. Grandma blowing the whistle to let Grandpa know that it was time for him to come to the house. Mom and Dad waltzing or poking in the kitchen. We always knew when Mom and Dad were going out dancing because she always made chicken casserole. We took one trip as a family to witness our cousin Michael's wedding at the Air Force Academy in Colorado. It was great seeing the mountains for the first time and sharing the back of the station wagon when mom, when it was nap time. After, we retired, after they retired, they enjoyed traveling the world, cruising to Alaska, traveling Europe, and visiting Hawaii were some of the highlights. Also, mom would collect needed items for the St. Joseph Indian School in South Dakota, and they would drive to South Dakota to drop them off. We would like to offer a heartfelt thank you to all the Heartland Terrace staff. Mom was always smiling and laughing with you, and she loved you like her own family. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts for providing the very best possible care for Mom and Dad. And I personally would like to thank Mary Kate and Emily for doing a wonderful job today with the singing and the playing of your instruments. During mom's last hospital stay, only one person was allowed to be with any patient due to the COVID restrictions. I was honored to be the one family member allowed to stay with mom. This responsibility is out of my comfort level, but I was happy that I was able to spend time with her face to face and in person because this had happened only once in the past year. It was nice to be able to touch and love on her and just to be with her. But one afternoon was particularly hard. She was having one of her lowest moments, and I thought I was going, and I thought she was going to her eternal rest. I was sitting next to her, holding her hand, caressing her face, praying over her, and actually being at peace that God's will would be done. But of course, weeping the whole time. I would it would have been a blessing 
to have it been there as she passed, but it wasn't her time. Later that evening, as I prepared to leave for the day, I sat next to her on the bed, and I kissed her five times on the forehead while thinking of my siblings, who had not been able to kiss or hug her for so long. Then I hugged her for a long time. I was then moved to go back and kiss her two more times. I didn't really know why at the time, but I came to realize later that those two additional kisses were for the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren, and it warmed my heart, and it made me smile. So if you ever feel bad and wish you had been able to hug or kiss her one more time, I took care of that for you. Just like I said when we lost Dad, she also knew that we loved her, and we knew she loved us, and it doesn't get any better than that. Mom and Dad, we feel honored and privileged to have been your children. You always loved us unconditionally, and you were both the best parents anyone could wish for. We will miss you tremendously. You touched so many lives because of you. We will live our lives the way that you both taught us, to work hard, to be kind to others, and to be faithful. Your kindness and selflessness will continue to inspire us forever. Rest in God's eternal peace. We love you. Thank you, Mary and Monica, for uh, sharing with the congregation the moving words and recalling the fond memories. And uh, your mom and dad will intercede for you to continue to share the same love with your loved ones. Would you please rise for the final commendation? Trusting in God, we have prayed together for March, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Marge again and enjoy her friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Marge in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Marge in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant. 
and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our, bro- with our sister forever. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, several people. First of all, the family for having helped me to prepare for the liturgy, which was reflecting of your own faith and uh, celebrating the faith of March along with Luke. I'd like to thank my altar service, uh, Linda and Jerry, for their assistance. Mary Kate and Emily, you did a great job. You're playing both uh, harp and uh, flute. I don't know if their voice was better than the instruments, or the instruments were better than their voices. You guys have beautiful voices, and you are caregivers for them. Thank you for honoring the loved ones of the family by being here. I also want to thank our director, music director, Nick, for uh, helping with the liturgy, working with uh, Mary, Kate, and Emily. And I also want to thank um, Dan Riedel for uh, obliging the family with the live streaming. All, of those, all those people who are watching them from a distance have been able to do the job because he was able to volunteer for us this time. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. So, in peace, let us take our sister to her place of rest. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Oh no. 